All right, this is the 9.5 day two video on uh, completing the square. And today we're going to focus on solving quadratic equations using the completing the square method. Over here to the right, we have five steps that we're going to follow in order to do this. All right, so if we look at the first step, it says we want to get all x terms on one side of the equation and the constant on the other. So we have to, in the case of number five, Add 51 to both sides. So this first step is finished. The second step is we want to add to both sides of the equation um, our C. So we got to find C. And remember that equals your B over 2 squared. So your b is 14, divide that by 2, so 7 squared is 49. So we add 49 to both sides. The third step, factor the quadratic into the square of a binomial and simplify the other side. So we have to factor that. Now you could do the, you know, find a times c that's sum to b, you can do all that stuff. Or you could remember the shortcut that I taught you yesterday, because this is a perfect square trinomial. The shortcut would be to put your x, put uh, left parentheses, then put an x, and then look at what your b is. I'm sorry, uh, your b over 2. So your b over 2 or your um, 14 divided by 2, that's 7. So that goes inside the parentheses here with the x. And then you square it. And then 51 and 49 gives us 100. Okay, so these first three steps... Um, should be familiar from yesterday. Okay, we didn't, we didn't change anything, those first three steps. The last two, though, um, are going to be specific to these types of problems where we have to solve uh, the quadratic equation. So we got to get x by itself. So in step four, uh, we want to take the square root of both sides. And the reason we do that is we need to get rid of this square. So what undoes the square? The square root. All right, now, um, the square and the square root cancel, so you're left with x plus 7 equals, and we should put a plus or minus here, so equals plus or minus the square root of 100. Whenever you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you need that plus or minus. Okay, to get x by itself now, I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. So I'm left with x equaling negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 100, which is 10. So you're going to have two answers. Your first answer is going to be x equals negative 7 plus 10, and your other one's going to be x equals negative 7 minus 10. So you're going to be left with x equals 3 and x equals negative 17. All right. Now, to check your answers, you could take both of these, plug it back into the original, and make sure the left-hand side of that equal sign equals 0. All right, let's look at number 6 now. Remember the first step is to get the constant on the uh, on the right side. So we're going to subtract 11 from both sides. So we have x squared minus 12x equals negative 11. That was the first step. The second step is to find what your c is. 
So that's going to be b over 2 squared. Your b in this case is negative 12. Um, and so your c is going to be 36. Okay, we have to now add that to both sides. We have to add it to both sides of this equation. So x squared Okay. Now we're going to factor this perfect square trinomial. Remember the shortcut, put your left parenthesis, put an x, and then look, what is your b divided by 2? It's negative 6. So minus 6 goes in here. Squared. And then that equals um, 36, a negative 11 plus 36 is 25. Okay, now we got to solve for x. We got to get it by itself. So we got to get rid of this square here. In order to do that, we've got to take the square root of both sides. So we're left with x minus 6 equals plus or minus the square root of 25. x minus 6 equals plus or minus 5. That's what the square root of 25 is. Okay, so now you're going to have, um, we got to add 6 to both sides. So we have x equals 6 plus or minus 5. So x equals 6 plus 5, or x equals 6 minus 5. So our solutions are 11. and 1. Alright, so that's number 6. We'll do one more. Alright, number 7. Again, first step is to get the constant on the right hand side there opposite the x squared and the x term. So we're left with x squared plus 6x equaling negative 8. Now we want to find our c. It's our second step. So that's your b over 2 and then squared. Our b is 6. So when we divide that by 2 and square it, we're going to get 9. All right, now I have to add 9 to both sides of this equation. Okay. Now, third step is to factor that. Remember the shortcut. Write your x, your left parentheses, then your x. And then look, what is your b over 2? Your b over 2 is 3, positive 3. Then put the square. And then that equals negative 8 plus 9, which is 1. Okay. Now we're going to solve this. We got to get rid of the square. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. Remember when we do that, we want the plus or minus sign. So x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 is 1. Get x by itself, so we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. So we have x equaling negative 3 plus or minus 1. So there's the two answers are x equals negative 3 plus 1 and x equals negative 3 minus 1. So x equals negative 2 
and x equals negative 4. All right, so those are the solutions for 7. Again, we can take these, plug them back in here to check our solution, make sure it's right. All right, what I want you to do right now is number 8 on your own. So go ahead and pause this, give it a shot when you're finished, uh, hit resume and check your answer. All right, so for number 8, you should have gotten x equaling 20 and x equaling negative 2 as your two solutions. And then there's the work um, to support that. So if you made a mistake, uh, check out the work, see where you made the error. All right, so again, um, what we did today is we solved quadratic equations using the um, completing the square method.